Welcome to video number two in the WordPress blogging series. Now in this video you're going to get some hands-on experience with your WordPress dashboard, but before we get into the nitty-gritty of building your blog, there are a few house cleaning tips that I always recommend doing prior to publishing your first blog post. Now these tips are merely recommendations and by no means do you have to set up your blog exactly like I do, but from my experience these tips have been very beneficial to my blog's overall growth strategy and they've helped me achieve a much stronger blogging foundation in the process. Now in this video I'm going to walk you through those tips and show you the six things that I always do before I start a blog. So let's take a closer look at what those six things are. Number one, change display name. By default, WordPress uses the email that you signed up with for Bluehost as your admin username. Now this means that anytime you publish a blog post, the author's name for that post will be your email address. Not cool unless you want the entire world to know your email address. So this tip will show you how to change the way your name is publicly displayed on your blog. Number two, disable comments. This tip is pretty self-explanatory and it's definitely a personal preference, but I choose not to have comments on my personal blog for a few different reasons. And this tip will show you how to disable the comments altogether. However, if you wanna give people the opportunity to comment on your blog, and a lot of people do, just go ahead and skip this step. Number three, change permalink settings. This is where we'll change the permalink structure to something that's more attractive and more SEO friendly. It's also gonna improve the aesthetics, usability, and forward compatibility of your links. Now, if you're shaking your head right now, no worries. We're gonna cover it all further in the video. Number four, delete unnecessary plugins. WordPress pre-installs some pretty unnecessary plugins. For example, the Hello Dolly plugin displays Hello Dolly song lyrics at the top right-hand side of your screen. It's virtually useless and it eats up space. So this tip will show you how to get rid of the plugins that you're not going to use. Number five, install recommended plugins. I always try to stay away from adding too many plugins to my blogs, but there are a few plugins that I always recommend adding to your blog's infrastructure. And this tip will cover those plugins that I always use before I start a blog. Number six, update site title. Once again, by default, WordPress pre-names your site and predetermines your tagline. This tip will show you how to personalize your site title and tagline so that it coincides with your blog's content. So in the last video we left off after we set up our Bluehost account and installed our WordPress dashboard. But in this video, we're actually gonna learn our way around the dashboard and set up a strong foundation before we start putting content online. It's easy to get excited once you finally get set up, but a lot of people jump the gun and start publishing content without getting their digital foundation set up properly. It's extremely important that we set ourselves up for success before we publish our first blog post. So before we start publishing content, let's take a closer look at the WordPress dashboard and set a strong foundation for our blog. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is change how your name is publicly displayed on your blog. Like I mentioned in the intro, by default, WordPress uses your email address as your admin username, which means anytime you publish a blog post, your email address is viewable by everyone. And I'm assuming you don't want the entire internet to have your email address. So to change your display name, simply go to the upper right-hand side of your screen and hover your mouse where it says howdy and then your email address and a drop down menu will appear and then click on the edit my profile link and this will bring you to your profile personal options and basically this is where you can personalize certain aspects of your profile one of them being how your name is publicly displayed so there are two things that I always change first I change the nickname and then the display name so on the left hand side of your screen next to where it says nickname I'm going to enter my full name and then where it says display name publicly as, I'm going to select my full name from the drop down menu. You can use anything that you like, but I choose to use my actual name. Once you've selected your full name, simply scroll down to the bottom of the screen and click the update profile button. And as you can see, the display name has been changed to my actual name. Moving on to tip number two, we'll go back to our home page of the dashboard, so simply Click on the dashboard link and that'll bring us back. Next, we're gonna turn the comments off. Now, I know a lot of people may disagree with me on this one, and that's fine, but I personally choose not to allow comments on my blog. Now, if you wanna give people the opportunity to comment on your blog, that's totally fine. Just go ahead and skip this step. But like I said, I prefer to turn the comments off. So in order to do that, you're gonna to have to go to your dashboard and click the turn comments on or off link. 
and that'll bring you to the discussion settings and this is where you can configure various aspects of the comments settings but for this tutorial we're simply going to be turning them off so uncheck all the boxes and click save changes and we're done moving on to tip number three change permalink settings now if you're brand new to blogging, you're probably unfamiliar with what a permalink is, so let me give you a quick rundown of what permalinks are and why they're important. By definition, a permalink is a static hyperlink to a particular web page or blog post. All it really is though, is it's the URL of the content that you're publishing on your WordPress blog. These are the links that you're gonna be sharing with the world whenever you wanna share your content, and these are the URLs that people will enter into their browsers whenever they want to view one of your pages. That's why it's very important for these links to be set up properly. Now the WordPress default permalink setting looks like this. This is not very user friendly and it's horrible for SEO. You want your links to be clean and optimized for search engines. And the best way to do that is to have a URL structure that contains keywords. So in order to change the permalink settings, simply hover your mouse over settings and click on permalinks. And this will bring you to the permalink settings menu. Now, as you can see, WordPress offers you the ability to create a custom URL structure for your permalinks. Now, the permalink setting I highly recommend you use is post name. This generates a short, memorable, and SEO-friendly URL that's based off the title of each of your blog posts. So, for example, if your blog post is called Learn to Cook in 5 Minutes, the URL for that post would be bensblogvideo.com forward slash learn to cook in 5 minutes much better than the default setting that WordPress starts you out with. So to change the Premier League setting, simply click on the post name circle and then click on the save changes button. And that has changed our Premier League setting. And let's take a look at it really quickly, show you a quick example. If we go to a sample post, you can see here the post title, Hello World, is now in the Premier League structure. So the link is now binsblogvideo.com forward slash hello world. Now, if you take a look at this before and after example, you can see the new permalink is a lot cleaner, more user-friendly, and it's optimized for search engines. Now that we've set up our permalink structure, let's move on to tip number four. Delete unnecessary plugins. So WordPress pre-installs some pretty unnecessary plugins. For example, the Hello Dolly plugin displays Hello Dolly song lyrics at the top right-hand side of your screen. It's virtually useless and it eats up space. So let's go ahead and get rid of the plugins that we're not going to use. So on the left hand side of your screen in the dashboard, click on where it says plugins and this will bring you to your plugin manager and basically this is where you can add, delete, and deactivate plugins on your WordPress blog. Like I previously mentioned, WordPress starts you off with some pretty unnecessary plugins. So to get rid of these plugins and to free up some space, simply click on the deactivate link under each plugin that you want to get rid of. and then check their boxes. And then from the drop down menu, select delete, and then click the apply button. Then on the next screen, click the yes, delete these files and data button to permanently delete the plugins. Moving on to tip number five, install recommended plugins. Now, like I said in the intro, I always try to stay away from adding too many plugins in my blogs, but there are a few plugins that I always recommend adding. If you visit my resource page, you can get a better look at all of the recommended plugins that are instrumental to starting a digital business. But for this video, I'll walk you through the process of adding a few plugins so that you can install the plugins that you feel are best for your blog. So to start adding plugins, simply click on the plugin link on the left-hand side of your screen, and this will bring us to our plugin management menu. And to add a new plugin, we're gonna to wanna to click on the add new button at the top of the screen. And this will bring us to where we can search through the available plugins. And as you can see, we have the option of filtering our search by featured, popular, recommended, and favorites. And if you have some extra time, I highly recommend browsing through the different plugins to get a better idea of what's available. But for this tutorial, I already know the plugins that I want to install. So on the right-hand side of the screen where it says search plugins, type in Yoast SEO. And again, if you visit my resource page, you can get a much better idea of the plugins I recommend and why I recommend them. But the Yoast SEO plugin is by far the number one plugin I recommend when it comes to SEO. 
Next, we want to actually install the plugin. So in order to do that, we'll find the Yoast SEO plugin and click the Install Now button. And on the next page, just simply click the Activate Plugin link and the plugin is now active. Now, as you can see, we're getting a pop-up window to start the tour from Yoast. And if you have some extra time, I encourage you to check it out. But for this tutorial, we'll skip it. So go ahead and click the Close button. Now let's go ahead and add another plugin. So just like before, we'll click the Add Plugin button at the top of the screen. And this next plugin I recommend is the Child Theme Configurator. Now we'll go into a little more detail of what a child theme is later in the blogging course, but for now I highly recommend installing this plugin. Having a child theme is by far a necessity if you are serious about your WordPress platform. So in the search bar, type in Child Theme Configurator. and then click the install button. And on the next page, click the activate plugin link and the plugin is now active. Now that you have a pretty good idea of how to install plugins, instead of walking you through the process of installing the rest of the plugins, let's move on to the final tip of this video. But whenever you have some extra time, cruise by my resource page and check out my recommended plugins. There you'll find all the plugins I use for blogwithbin.com. Simply add and install each plugin and you'll be good to go. Moving on to tip number six, update site title. Now once again, by default, WordPress prenames your site and predetermines your tagline. This tip will show you how to personalize your site title and tagline so that it coincides with your blog's content. So let me show you what I'm talking about whenever I say site title and tagline. Now if we go back to our dashboard and click on the settings link, this will bring us to our general settings page. And if you look at the top of the page, you can see the site title and tagline default settings. They say my site and just another WordPress site. This is very generic and we definitely want to change this. Reason being, the site title is displayed in the title bar of the web browser and it's displayed in the header for most themes. So in order to change it to something that coincides with your blog's content, in the text box next to site title, simply type in the preferred name of your blog and then directly below that, add a catchy tagline. Next, scroll to the bottom of the screen and click the Save Changes button, and your site title and tagline have now been updated. So there you have it. We've configured your blog's admin area and created a strong foundation to build on. Hopefully after this video, you have a better feel and understanding of the WordPress dashboard. That's going to do it for this video. Now, if you found this video helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would like, share, and subscribe to the Blog with Ben YouTube channel. As always, your support means a great deal to me and my family. And for that, I thank you. So with that being said, let's move on to video number three. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.